Uh, I want to give you guys an update on what's going on with line three, which is, uh, for all intents and purposes, the new DAPL, the new Dakota Access. Uh, but, you know, if, if you guys saw the coverage of, uh, of line three, there, and there's a lot of great uh, journalists that are talking about it, Unicorn Riot, which is directly in Minnesota, which is where line three is being put down. They're, they're doing a lot of great coverage for it. And there's a lot of activist groups and pretty much every indigenous tribe that's up there um, is against this pipeline being put into place. And what's going on with this pipeline is um, they're claiming, you know, hey, there's some anomalies. There, there's, there's thousands and thousands of anomalies uh, that cause the, this, this pipeline to break down. So we want to replace it right? Quote unquote, replace it. So what are they doing? They're finding a whole new corridor, a whole new area and building a whole new pipeline, uh, which gets uh, oil from the tar sands, which is particularly like super dirty oil. And there's a leak in Kalamazoo from one of these pipelines, right? Uh, that comes from Canada. Uh, and uh, it leaked, it got into the water supply and it sinks. To the very bottom so it's 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 not just is it like a pipeline that breaks down and leaks these anomalies is what they call them which is a very like which is a very legalese term right it's very clear that they're trying to fucking avoid a lawsuit that's all they're doing it's like oh well it's anomalies we said oh we well we said it's anomalies it, it's not the normal thing that happens this is just an anomaly there's a couple that you know how you know how anomalies are supposed to be things that happen infrequently and how like how like when you compare it to infinity, a couple thousand is like, it's anomalous, you know? That's how they're kind of phrasing it. The pipeline that they're putting in uh, is not a replacement pipeline. It is a brand new pipeline because it's not replacing any parts of this old break broken down pipeline, with this line three. It's in a whole new section and it's a whole brand new pipeline. So obviously there's a lot of protesters that are upset and, and rightfully so because you're about to destroy these people's homes. You're about to destroy these people's water supply. Um, and in America, we already have problems with our water. We already have lead in our water. We're, you know, smaller cities are being sacrificed uh, because, you know, they want to privatize their water and, and, you know, hey, this is something that people need to live. Let's put a dollar sign on it. Uh, and the reality is that these pipelines will leak. They always do. That's the, other th that's the other thing that they don't talk about. That's why they say things like anomaly, right? Like they want people to think that these pipelines don't really fucking break down. And the reality is they 100% do. So these pipeline uh, protesters, these water protectors, as it were, which is a term that was coined back in the Dapple days, uh, and probably before that too, but I think during Dapple is when water protector became a very popularized um, title for these folks. And uh, they are now putting their bodies at risk to stop the construction of this pipeline, right? Uh, so in February, which was not that long ago, but it feels like it was about 1,700 years ago, uh, in, in February, um, three protesters uh, locked themselves inside the pipeline, inside the pipeline itself, to prevent the construction of the pipeline. Uh, they were in there for six plus hours. They were able to uh, prevent construction uh, on that particular section of the pipeline for six plus hours. Now, the construction didn't stop, right? Um, it, we, we saw that the last time that I was talking about line three, there was a, a, a protester that, uh, you know, chained themselves to a digger. Um, one of those things, you know, it does exactly what <laughs> it says. I don't know why I feel, I did this last time too, where I felt like I needed to explain what a digger was. And it's like, no, idiot. It's a thing that digs. That's, <laughs> that's what it, <laughs> that's what it, why would you need to over explain that? Uh, <laughs> you know, but he, he, he chained himself to a, a digger and, and they like stopped working for about 30 minutes. And then the foreman was like, go around him. 
So they put his safety at risk and then call the cops to get him off of the thing. So uh, they did the same thing. They, they just started construction on a different part of the pipeline. And the girl who was in the pipeline was like, it's, it's gross and it's rusty. Like this pipeline's not even finished building yet. And it's supposed to be this new fucking innovative pipeline. And it's already rusting on the inside, you know? And it's like, maybe we don't fucking use that then. But they got arrested. Uh, they got a couple misdemeanor charges, right? Uh, minor trespassing charges, uh, no permit that kind of stuff. There was another one, a car blockade. Um, these natives, these indigenous folks, um, they, uh, they, they get paid out. They get a check from Enbridge, uh, a small teeny tiny percentage. It's not like a big thing. Like what, this is one of those things where conservatives love uh, bringing that shit up where they're like, oh, well, the pipelines are helping you out. They're giving you money, so you should shut the fuck up. It's like, yeah, but at what cost? One, and two... For a company that probably makes a couple billion dollars a year, um, and I'm I'm probably hitting the low end of it, giving a giving a few hundred dollars or or at most like a thousand bucks, uh, what is I mean what is that? That's fucking nothing, right? So, it it's very little money for 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 a very devastating cost. So he burned the check, or, or rather, I'm sorry, they burned the check, and uh, and then handcuffs themselves to a car they overturned in the middle of the road, so it would be a lot more difficult to move uh, to prevent construction equipment from getting to the construction site. Again, uh, you know, the sheriff's department was called, sheriffs came in, arrested them, misdemeanor charges, trespassing, no permit, that sort of stuff. Uh, there was another protester that was on top of a bipod, which uh, if you don't know what a bipod is, I mean, it, it's exactly what it kind of sounds like. It's two triangles coming down. The example that they use on um, in the dictionary is like something that you put to like hold up a gun to make it into like a turret. But it's, it's just that piece that's a triangle piece that comes together. Um, so she... She tied herself to that, uh, and they were still telling people to, like, go underneath the bipod, despite the fact that, like, if they, if, if these construction vehicles or, or, like, any, any just basic vehicle might have tapped into this thing, it would have broken and she would have been injured or killed, you know. Uh, again, uh, cops came and they brought her down and um, arrested her. Again, misdemeanor, trespassing, no permit, which is hilarious to me that they're that they're like giving these people trespassing charges when uh, Enbridge is the one that's trespassing on indigenous lands. They are violating a treaty and they don't have a legitimate permit to build this uh, fucking pipeline that goes over like 22 bodies of water. Uh, and when it leaks, it, it will just completely destroy this ecosystem. It will destroy natural bodies of water. Uh, it'll destroy the thing that, um, this wild rice that the in indigenous folks have, uh, been harvesting and, and, you know, earning a modest living from, and, uh, not just that, but it's also sacred crop, right? It, it, because to, to them, it's, it's the giver of life and that's, so it's like sacred crop to them. And, uh, and so they're, they're violating all of this stuff and they're the ones that have the balls to be like, Hey, I know we're trespassing, but we're going to arrest you for trespassing on our trespasses. <laughs> That's basically what they're doing. Right. Uh, and I love this permit. They, they need a permit, um, unlawful assembly. They, they, it's unlawful assembly because they don't have a, a permit to assemble, uh, which is hilarious because, uh, these people clearly don't understand uh, what the term protest and civil disobedience means. Like, that's that's just, that's ridiculous. Why would, like, do you not understand how this works? Like, dissent, dissent isn't dissent if you have to fill out paperwork and be like, okay, we're getting together today and we're going to try to, like, 
disrupt some stuff. Is that okay with the government that we're trying to disrupt? Is that okay with the corporation we're trying to disrupt? But again, here's the thing, guys. Uh, this sort of stuff isn't anything new. This sort of stuff is what they do with every pipeline. What they do anytime that there's any sort of uh, protest or peaceful assembly or any sort of stuff or demonstration uh, when it involves a fossil fuel industry. What they do is uh, it's part of ALEC. It's boilerplate laws that a lot of these states use where they arrest you on trespassing for uh, and, and preventing critical infrastructure or harming critical infrastructure, which they claim these pipelines to be. And it's like, no, motherfucker, getting wa clean water to people. Those, those pipes are critical infrastructure. Pipes that don't leach lead, that's fucking critical infrastructure. An oil pipeline that's going to leak and poison that water is not critical in infrastructure. Right, so these are backward ass laws that no one should give credence to. No one should give any legitimacy and weight to. Uh, but it's just coke funded, you know. And and what's what, what what pipelines are up in that area, up in in the northern plains, is pipelines, you know, the Dakota Access pipelines from Enbridge and pipelines from the coke industries. So of course the Koch brothers, uh, you know, funded this uh, this private group to write these boilerplate laws and then get polit and pay off politicians uh, to adopt these laws. So again, they're breaking treaties, right? The the treaties are being broken. Uh, they don't technically have a right. Governor Walz just kind of let them do whatever the fuck they wanted to do. And this is a brand new pipeline. Enbridge claims it's some sort of a replacement, but that's false. That's just a lie. Uh, this is a whole brand new corridor. And the reason why they say they can't, oh, we can't go in to where or, the original line three is and start fixing up portions of it that are broken is because, well, that corridor is a little too jammed up. There are too many different pipelines in this one spot poisoning those communities. So we're going to let those communities just be poisoned, and then we're going to look for new communities to poison. That's basically what they're saying. So they're trying to... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Throat's a little dry. Um, sorry if I, I try not to cough into the mic. But they're trying to get the governor to, like, pull back, right? They're trying to get the governor to reverse his decision. And uh, there's been, I mean, you know, Governor Walsh is MIA on this whole thing. So now <clears throat> they're like, well, if we, um, if we do these demonstrations, perhaps it'll get to a, 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 a bigger entity. Perhaps now Joe Biden will get involved. And Joe Biden has been silent. And now remember, Joe Biden said that he was going to lead with science. And what does science say? It says that pipelines like this will 100% crack, will break, and that oil will poison the water supply and be devastating to these communities. Not just that, but the burning of fossil fuels is contributing to climate change. Fracking is contributing to climate change. We had an earthquake in Youngstown, Ohio. That's not fucking normal. And you have to st and, and you have to ban fracking. Milo says hello. Uh, my cat agrees with me. That's why he jumped. He's excited. He's like, fuck yeah, are you talking about banning fracking? I'm into it. I'm fucking into it. So I'm gonna sit on your lap while you're live streaming <laughs> and put my tail right up onto the screen because that because fuck fracking that's why he's doing this you can see his little tail here are you going to be good he's going to be he's going to be all right don't don't eat my headphones please uh but biden biden won't do shit biden doesn't know that this is happening biden doesn't care that this is happening because dakota hap dakota access happened while biden was vp while obama was president so he doesn't give a shit, and he stayed silent on this whole thing. That's that's what he's going to do. Now, a lot of people are going to ask, well, why would, why would these people put their bodies in danger? Why would they do something like this? 
And you got to figure, well, they haven't been heard. Uh, they tried to talk to Governor Walz, right? They tried to talk to him and said, hey, uh, this is not okay. We're not okay with our communities having this pipeline. It's not going to create as many jobs as you think. Uh, it's not going to be good for the community as you think. It's going to break. It's going to poison us. We don't want this. They said this uh, four years ago, and it was ignored by every fucking Democrat around. Because they don't really, they don't actually give a shit. Democrats are just rainbow flag Republicans. That's all they are. And Biden didn't fucking give a shit because Biden was fine with uh, protesters at Dakota Access getting, you know, fucking uh, using sonic cannons and water cannons on them and rubber bulleting them and essentially turning uh, North, the 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 Dapple protests into a war zone, as it were. Right. So, what do you do when words fail? Well, you got to up the ante. You got to do something that is going to get these people to start paying attention, right? Like that's the only thing that's left. That's why it's like, you know, folks from Extinction Rebellion a couple years ago, maybe like two years ago, uh, super glued themselves to the corridors in Congress, right? It's why people will go and uh, lock themselves up. All right. <laughs> my cat just my cat just moved my microphone. All right. It's time to go down. Time to get down. Scooch. Okay. <laughs> he just bumped it with his with his head. Uh but it's but it's why people will lock themselves up inside a pipeline. It's why people will overturn a car and lock it's why people will you know chain themselves to construction equipment. It's not because uh, it's not because they, you know, are trying to be dramatic. It's because they they don't have any other option because they've talked to people. They've tried to attend uh, town hall meetings. They've called their governor. They've called their congressman. They've done all these things and they get nothing. So now they have to take these, uh, <laughs> these uh, you know, Kind of ex not, and these aren't really even extreme reactions. These are just disruptions, which is exactly what needs to happen. Because these construction um, contracts shouldn't have even been approved, right? So, so now this is what's going to happen. And if the cops up the ante, then the the protesters are going to up the ante. And what's really happening now is a lot more of these indigenous tribes of these pro-indigenous groups are getting involved and eventually won't just be climate change activists that get involved. It'll start becoming a larger and larger movement. That's kind of the thing that's happening. In a lot of these things, I mean, we saw it over the summer, uh, you know, and the, the Black Lives Matter movement merged with the new labor movement that was happening. So you kind of saw some messages going back and forth. And you see how those two things are intersectional. The same thing is going to start happening to this. And, and you know, in, in six months, it's going to become unignorable that corporate media is going to have to talk about this. Joe Biden is going to have to address this. His fucking climate czar, which what? Uh, he's going to have to address something like this. And they're and they're going to come out and and claim that they're people of science. Oh, we're the party of science with this shit. And they're going to have to. They're just going to have to ignore the science in order to fill their fucking pockets with fossil fuel money. And keep lying to people, and eventually, you know, what are these Democrat Democratic Party uh, apologists going to say? Joe Biden's already ignoring science when it comes to opening schools without vaccinating kids and teachers, without putting safety protocols in place. The science is saying, don't do that. That will lead to another wave. That will lead to community spread. And he's like, ah, fuck it. We got to get these parents back to work. I will not sacrifice the economy for the virus. Well, the, the science is saying you need to take care of these people first and fuck your economy. And Joe Biden says no. So he's not a president that's going to lead by science. He's just a president that's going to say he's going to do that and then do the exact opposite, but then 
have and then cl- basically say that you have to praise him for at least saying that he's going to lead by science, which is fucking bullshit. So let me look at some comments here. Aram, good to see you. Uh, regarding oil pipelines, it's not a matter of if they leak, it's just a matter of when and where they'll leak. Exactly, yeah. Uh, pretty much every pipeline leaks. Uh, there might be like one, you know, that hasn't leaked yet, and it eventually will. Y- you know, and 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 that's me being generous to 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 that, and you know, not not making absolute statements. But even then, if a majority of the pipelines leak, like that, that would mean that you should stop doing this. Because if you keep doing the same thing and expecting different results, that's called insanity. And that's essentially what's going on with the construction of these pipelines. Uh, Holly is saying, same with DAPL. They use language like anomaly for cover. Yeah, I mean, it, that's that's why there's so many parallels between what, what's going on, what is going on with line three and what happened with DAPL. And it's very clear that through three different administrations, nobody has learned a fucking thing. Not a goddamn thing. So it's just, you know, and 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 then it goes to show, like, why should we trust this party? Why should we trust the... De- I mean, we know the Republicans aren't going to do shit about climate change because they don't give a shit. <laughs> They're open about the denying climate change. They're open about lying to their base, right? They're open about using religion to uh, manufacture consent to destroy communities with leaking oil by digging underground and causing earthquakes in places that never are, aren't sitting on a fault line. They're fine with that. But the Democrats play it up to be like, oh, well, we're going to listen to the science and we think this and we think that, and they don't. And we just, we saw what happened with Apple under Obama. And now it's like, we got a guy from the Obama administration that's president and there's nothing. Not a fucking word. Not a fucking word from him about this. Oh well, we sh- we you know we canceled the Keystone XL. That's great. What about the other pipelines? He told Ed Fallon to go vote for somebody else when Ed Fallon asked him what he's going to do about these pipelines that leak. Shane, put in your zip code to see uh, what's in your water. Uh, www.ewg.org slash tapwater. Uh, thank you for that link, Shane. I, I definitely will. I know that Pittsburgh water uh, does contain lead. Uh, we just got one of those filter thingies to put on our uh, our, our tap downstairs. Uh, and, I, and we had to get the one that specifically filters out lead, which is a little bit more expensive. So, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Shane also says, let's all replace... Uh, let's replace all the oil pipelines with beer pipelines. I'm into it. I'm into it. If you're out by uh, Michigan and they and they're gonna uh, put bells in those pipelines, I'm into it. I like this plan, Shane. I'm into it. Let's make this happen. Uh, Biden. Uh, Biden says uh, he'll see how it plays out. Well, yeah, man, he's not really, you're, you're a hundred percent correct. You know, he said he's not going to ban fracking. Uh, he's a hundred percent correct. Uh, he's, he's not going to ban it and he's going to see how it plays out. And how is it going to play out is more communities in, uh, in Western Pennsylvania, in the central Pennsylvania, in the Eastern part of Ohio, West Virginia, uh, all the way down into Virginia, Maryland, probably parts of, uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, all of these places are going to start getting earthquakes. The, the foundation of the ground itself is probably going to start collapsing. You're going to see uh, water supplies up in the northern plains and into the Midwest start getting uh, polluted with, with oil, with tar sand oil, which is one of the like dirtiest fucking oils around, right? Like that, We'll wait and see is essentially we're going to sacrifice all of these small communities, specifically uh, low-income, indigenous, black and brown communities. And I'm going to line my pockets with fucking fossil fuel money. And if you don't vote for me, you're not black. Like, that's that's Joe Biden's fucking answer to it. Again, I know I asked this fucking question over Twitter, but what is the fucking point of the Democratic Party at this at this point? There really isn't. They're not the opposition to the Republican. They're not an alternative to the Republican Party. Because because they are the Republican Party. 
And Bill Clinton kind of forged his, you know, forged that path for them with the help of Joe Biden. I said this the day of the inauguration. I was like, man, it's really exciting uh, that we finally have another Republican president after four years. Because we do. Like, Joe Biden is not a Democrat. He's a Republican. He votes more like a Republican than anything else. And if he's going to ignore the science uh, behind fucking, um, you know, climate change, then what difference does it make between a Democrat and a Republican at this point? There's so many things that are basically the same about them. One side has a rainbow flag. The other one fucking doesn't. You know, one side has, uh, is, is, says they're cool and inclusive. And then the other side is like, well, we got a Bible we can hate people with. Like, <laughs> so uh, Holly asks, what about the environmental impact statement? Uh, I'm not sure what that is. And there was no mention in the articles I read about the environmental impact statement. Uh, I think the closest thing they've gotten to is basically showing you exactly how bad it is when um, the pipelines leak. Uh, I believe, oh man, I'm blanking on the name of the organization. I talked about them the last time I talked about line three. So I'm going to kind of peruse through my notes to see if I wrote the name of the organization down. But they talked about um, what happened in Kalamazoo. Uh, and they, yeah, okay. Uh, it's, it's Honor the Earth. Yeah, Honor the Earth. Um, they talked about what happened in Kalamazoo uh, as as sort of like an example of what happens when these pipelines leak, break, and, you know, get into the water supply, what it does to, um, what it does to the environment, what it does to the, the agriculture and the, and the flora and fauna and the environment. So, uh, I, is that the environmental impact statement you're, you're asking about? Because they did present that to the governor, uh, and the governor basically, uh, did one of these. He was like, I don't know. I don't, I can't, I can't see it. Is it up? Is it on the screen? What's happening? He got horse blinders on and pretended like it wasn't real. So, it, you know, he's clearly very, ignore, very, very much ignoring these uh, protesters. People's Party says, I'm going to add a mongoose to our flag <laughs> uh, and maybe remove the bird. You talking about the, uh, uh, the eagle? Is that what you're talking about? Um, all right. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.